Hey everybody, Jeremy here from Video Tutor Studio and today I'm going to show you how to get smooth playback with your title in DaVinci Resolve. So let's check it out. Alright, so we're in DaVinci Resolve right now. I'm going to share with you how to get smooth playback with your title by rendering the cache. So here, if I were to bring one title in my timeline and to play it, as you can see right away, and we don't have real-time playback. However, once you play it once, twice or three times, as you can see, we're now getting close to real-time playback. But keep in mind that right now I'm on a pretty powerful computer. It's an Apple M1 Max with 32 gig of RAM. So if you're running something less powerful, you're definitely gonna need to render the cache. Even for me on certain titles that are a bit more heavy, like an infographic or something with a lot of elements, for example, that bullet point, if I play it, I don't get near to uh, real-time playback. So what are rendering cache? Rendering cache are basically a file that is render that allow DaVinci to have like an optimized version to play. Uh, so it's going to be at real time playback. Those files are generated automatically and installed on your computer. So here, if we go over to setting in master settings, we have a couple of things, optimized media and render cache and working folder. So here, as you can see, the cache file location is where uh, the cache clip will be saved. If you want to change the location of that folder to put it on the SSD, you can just click browse and here uh, select the new folder where you want those cache clip to be saved. Another thing you want to do to have a quicker render time and to have uh, less heavy files is changing here the render cache format. For me, by default, it's in ProRes 422HQ. I'm on Mac, so I'm gonna stay with ProRes, but I'm gonna select 422LT, which is a lower quality because I don't need HQ for that. But if you're on Windows, I will suggest that you go with DNxHR LB. By default, you should be in HQ, but just bring it down again to LB. It will make the caching speed quicker. Here we have a couple box options. Enable background caching after five seconds, so you can change that to be whatever uh, time you want. And here I would suggest that you tick also uh, automatically cache transition in user mode and automatically cache composite in user mode. Today we're only gonna see on fusion effect, but I will recommend that you just select those two as well, because it applies the same principle, but just for transition and composite. And with those explanations out of the way, now let's just get into how to render the cache and use it. So here, if I play it again, as you can see, we still have some drop frame and it didn't uh, process that in the background because by default if i go over to playback and here i just scroll to render cache it's by default ticked as none but if i switch for smart as you can see here we have a red bar appearing which shows us that the title hasn't been uh, processed and the blue uh, progression is just showing us the part that has been processed. So by default in smart mode, when I'm not doing anything, it's just doing it in the background for me and it's rendering that clip. And so now if we play it, as you can see, we don't have any drop frame anymore and we have real time playback. So the smart mode is doing basically everything automatically in the background, but you don't have really a say on what is a priority or not. And here, if you were to switch to user instead, and I were to bring uh, a couple of the title, let's just bring maybe two or three. As you can see right now, it's starting to process this one by default because it's the first one in the timeline. But if I would like uh, this one to be processed in priority, I could just go at the beginning and play it. And then instead, it will just uh, process this one rather than the first one. Another thing that can be useful here if I were to bring another one is that you have an option right there, show all video frame. If it's unticked and I'm trying to play here this bullet point, as you can see, we've got some drop frame and here uh, the viewer is basically not following up and it doesn't display quickly enough because there is just too many drop frame. If I were to change that and then uh, tick show all video frame, now instead, I'm just gonna start with a fresh one right here if I'm playing it, it's just going to play it again with drop frame, but at least uh, the play head is not going to move too far ahead and it's just going to uh, show us the entire process. And by the end of the time it's played, the entire thing will be rendered. So I think it's just nicer to have that. So, you know, you're always actually seeing uh, what has been processed or not in real time sort of. Another thing that you can do when you bring a title, you can just simply right click on it and here render a cache fusion output and you can just put that on and it will just automatically uh, process that clip. Something to keep in mind is that if here you make any change to the clip that has been processed, so here, for example, I'm gonna reduce the size, it's just gonna uh, remove what has been processed and it will start to process the clip once again. 
Now, as I said, I will save some files in your computer. So if for whatever reason you want to delete uh, all those cache files, you can easily go over to playback, then delete render cache. And here you can just select either all unused or selected clip. So as stated, selected clip will only delete the one that I've selected here. So if I select that and then go there, to uh, just delete that. That will be only the one that I've just selected. Unused will be all the ones that are not in use and all will be uh, deleting all the render cache for the entire project. If you want to delete the entire render cache for uh, an entire uh, database, for example, you can just go over to setting here, just check where those cache clips are stored. And then you can just go to that folder and delete all the folder within it. And it will just erase all the cache clip. So if you haven't done that in a while, uh, maybe go check that because that could save you like 100 gigabytes of storage. I recently just cleaned that up and I've saved like 80 uh, gig. So it can be pretty useful when you're running out of memory. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's how you can get better playback for your titles in DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.